David Byrne's typical breakfast is probably the best introduction to his character. I get up every morning and I have my, my grapefruit and my coffee. Byrne was the lead vocalist of Talking Heads, a rock band from New York formed in 1975. Their music pioneered the new wave genre. Their songs had a variety of themes. Just sort of I, yeah, I think I default to more ambiguous kind of abstract lyrics that are more generalizations. Mm. But the group usually focused on the smaller aspects of life. I try to write about small things, paper, animals, a house. Love is kind of big. I have written a love song though. In this film I sing it to a lamp. Berner was born in Dumbartonshire, Scotland, 14th of May 1952. When he was young, his family skipped across the Atlantic Ocean to live in Canada, and eventually settled in the United States. It was in the US that Berner attended Rhode Island School of Design during the 70s. Here, he met two people who would end up in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame alongside him. First, he met Chris France. France would become the drummer of Talking Heads. But Berner dropped out and came back for a visit a couple of years later. Upon returning to Rhode Island, he was introduced to Tina Weymouth, the future bass guitarist of Talking Heads, who was France's girlfriend at the time. Byrne and France formed a band called The Artistics, and although Weymouth was not technically part of the band, she drove the two guys wherever they needed to go, and also cut their hair. She drove them to gigs, cut their hair, and gave them her last sandwich. The Artistics dissolved after about a year. Byrne went on his own way for a while. And so we sort of went our separate ways and got back together again in New York and started the band there. Once again, Byrne and France formed a band, this time called Talking Heads. So the story goes, a mutual friend gave them the name when he saw a film title in a TV guide magazine, The Talking Head. It was the name of some uh, grade Z science fiction movie, I think. Oh, really? I think it was called The Talking Head. Uh-huh. Probably a head in a box or something. Talking Heads needed a bass guitarist. Weymouth had started teaching herself guitar when she was 14, and so she had a background in music. France tried to persuade Weymouth to learn bass by listening to records, so she could join Talking Heads. She was fairly reluctant to become part of the band, since she thought she was just going to be up against a lot of flack for being the girl. Byrne was a little reluctant to let Weymouth join. Do you remember um, hearing from Chris what David thought about you joining the group? He said to me, he thought that women's role shouldn't really be in the big world because it was a dangerous place for women. Byrne asked her to audition three times before she officially joined Talking Heads. On the other hand, France thought that having a woman in the band would bring attention to the group. Weymouth ended up contributing immensely to the signature sound of Talking Heads, combining minimalist art punk bass lines with danceable funk inflected riffs. Between 1975 and 1977, Talking Heads played gigs across New York City, and in 76, they signed to Sire Records. France and Weymouth married in 77, which was a significant year for the band. They released their first single in February, Love Goes to Building on Fire. Talking Heads became a four-piece band in March, welcoming Jerry Harrison as a keyboardist, guitarist, and backing vocalist. Their first album, Talking Heads 77, was released to critical acclaim in September. Listening to the record, one may realize that Burns certainly has a unique, less refined voice. The better the singer's voice, the harder it is to believe what they're saying. So I use my faults to an advantage. There's no doubt that Byrne is a quirky guy. From your house. I'll tell you later. And as it happens, he is slightly on the autistic spectrum. It's the very functioning end of the autism spectrum. Yeah, yeah, it's a very functional. Like, so I could certainly function fine, but I, but, but socially very uncomfortable. Um, probably the idea of observing and asking, like, am I supposed to do that? Is that the way? You, is that what people do? That probably goes along with it a little bit. This contributed to his sci-fi air on the stage. The band's signature debut hit, and first to make the charts, was Psycho Killer. The song has one of the most memorable bass lines in rock history. 
Psycho Killer was actually the first song written by Byrne and France when they attended Rhode Island School of Design. The song went through many iterations before the final version released in December of 77. Byrne originally wanted a Japanese section for the bridge. He found a girl who could speak the language, but she was frightened away when he asked her to come up with some murderous words. Weymouth could speak French, and drawing inspiration from Hitchcock's thriller Psycho, she composed a French section for the song. As an aside, Qu'est-ce que c'est translates to, what is this? For their next three albums, the band collaborated with Brian Eno. Looking back from the present, Eno's production career is rather impressive. He produced albums for David Bowie, a handful of chart-topping U2 albums, Paul Simon's critically praised Surprise, as well as Coldplay's multi-platinum album Viva La Vida. Not to mention, Encyclopedia Britannica cites him as creating the genre of ambient music. His experimental approach to music making was well suited to alternative performers. While working with Eno, Talking Heads would compose another of their famous singles, Once in a Lifetime, for which Eno would write the chorus. Byrne wrote the verses. When asked about the song's deeper meaning, Byrne said, We're largely unconscious. You know, we operate half awake or on autopilot and end up, whatever, with a house and family and job and everything else, and we haven't really stopped to ask ourselves, how did I get here? In the music video for Once in a Lifetime, Byrne spasms like a malfunctioning robot while gesturing in Martian sign language. He approached movement not as a dancer, but as an actor. Byrne took his unconventional moves and grooves to the stage in 1983, as the band promoted their album Speaking in Tongues. While obviously gaining a fair amount of attention, he also caught the creative eye of director Jonathan Demme. Demme filmed a few Talking Head shows and created the acclaimed 1984 concert film Stop Making Sense. Why did you call the movie Stop Making Sense? Because it's good advice. Because music and performing does not make sense. Eno had parted ways with Talking Heads after the completion of the 1980 album Remain in Light. The following interview with Byrne is about three years after Eno went his own way. Do you think you'll do any more with Brian Eno? Can you see anything coming up in the future? Possible. We haven't talked about it in a while. He hasn't been doing much. He's been doing video installations. Right. So he hasn't been doing much in the way of music anyway. Between 81 and 83, the band members focused more on side projects. Weymouth and France formed a splinter group called Tom Tom Club, another new wave group which gained commercial success. Byrne worked on the score for a ballet called The Catherine Wheel. Talking Heads would release three albums between 85 and 88. In these final days, the faults in Byrne's relationship with Weymouth and France started to show. In his memoir, Remain in Love, France said that the more successful Talking Heads became, the more cold and dyspeptic David became. Byrne often claimed to be the sole creator of Talking Heads, which was simply untrue since France was a co-founder. The band waited three years after the release of their last album to announce their breakup in 1991. Byrne and the other members of Talking Heads were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2002. To date, this was the last time the band played together, performing Life During Wartime, Psycho Killer, and Burning Down the House. Or should I say, Burning Down the House. Since David Byrne's work is quite extensive, I'm going to create a part 2 focusing on his personal life and solo projects, because let's be honest, I can't contain his eccentric personality in a single video. But I hope you enjoyed this biography about Byrne as a member of Talking Heads. Now please enjoy my favourite cover of Once in a Lifetime. Letting the days go by, letting the water hold me down, letting the days go by, water flowing underground, into the blue again, after the money's gone. Once in a lifetime.